join me today on one of my favourite places ever to fish and that is the River Swale. Uh, going to be doing a bit of waggler fishing for chub today um, and I've come to a part of the swale I've actually never fished um, at a bit of the river called Fordington which is ran by Helper B and Brapper and AC. Uh, I was going to go somewhere else but unfortunately there's a match on and then the peg I got told to fish here there's pleasure anglers on. So I've had a little walk about, I've had a look for a peg and I've picked this one behind me. Uh, it's nice and shallow, fast water, plenty of oxygen for a day like today when it's red hot. And for me, there's no better thing in fishing than seeing a waggler run down the river, go under and there'll be a big chub on the end. So I can't wait to get fishing. So I'm gonna go get on my box, get some fish caught and hopefully run you through a few little tips and a few little hints of the way I approach this type of river. <music> through my setup for today. First of all starting with a rod, Shimano Aero X5 14 foot flow. For me that 14 foot length just makes control on your line and your float that little bit easier and for me 14 foot rod is a must. On my reel I've got 018 Shimano X Age. I don't want anything too thick. Uh, that thinner line again helps aid presentation, helps me aid control on my line and keeping it behind my float all the time. Uh, it's a nice smoke grey colour as well which means I'm confident fishing that direct to my hook so I've got no weak links these chub bite really hard and I do not want them to be breaking me. Onto my float I've got a four treble A DH speci wag now that's only shotted with three treble A's and a few shot down the line um, under shotted slightly which just aids the buoyancy and stops it dragging under when I'm dragging some line on the bottom. Now one little interesting thing is the way I attach my float to the line uh, rather than the traditional way of putting shot either side of it what I do is put a float stop on the line followed by a quick change swivel and then three more float stops to hold it in place and I get a float attachment which I attach to my float I tie a loop of line into that and then attach my shot to it that then simply clips onto my snap swivel and um, it just prevents me having shot on my line I'm going to be moving about and risk damaging that, that thin line it's not something I can claim credit for. Nathan Watson showed me this a few years ago. Uh, he showed me it for attaching pellet wagglers, but it just lends itself perfectly to this type of fishing when I'm going to be changing depth a lot and I don't want to damage the line. Moving down the line, I've got some pairs of number eights as my droppers. Uh, could use number sixes, but for me, again, number six shot is just a bit harsher on your line and can damage it. So then pairs of number eights just allow me to get a similar amount of weight down my line. But I'm not having to worry about damaging my line as I move them about. Finish that off with a size 16 Camerson Animal. Nice and strong, not going to straighten, not going to let me down. And for me, that, perf that setup is perfectly balanced and I'm going to land everything I hook, whether that's a 4 ounce chublet, a 4 pound chub, or maybe even a barbel.
these clear shallow rivers that can be really crafty and your presentation has got to be right to catch them. Now to get your float going through the peg you want it running in a straight line down with the floor and to do this you need to keep all of your line behind the float. So as it runs down the river the float will try and pick your line up and it will pull it in front of your float. So what you need to do is be picking up your line and laying it back behind the float again. Now on a fast peg like this that's actually quite difficult. If I cast my float in I might have to do that five or six times on the way down the peg. So ideally today most of my bites are coming sort of towards the bottom of my peg around them trees. Knowing that allows me to cast a little bit further down my peg. I can cast so I'm only slightly upstream of the tree. By the time my float's landed I've mended my line I'm getting straight towards the catching zone. Perfect presentation because all of my line is always behind my float. So as you can see I'm firing my bait in again downstream get ready to cast and I'm casting much further down at the minute than where I'm feeding that gives me a chance to pick my line up lay it all behind my float and then it goes through in front of the tree in my catching area where hopefully I'll get a bite so I'm getting towards the bottom of the trees now that's probably as far down as I've been getting any bite what I'm going to do now, wind back and you can see when I pick it up and wind in, my line's in a straight line to my floor, meaning I'm getting good presentation all the way down my peg. So obviously no bites that time, wind back and just repeat the process. Check my bait, both my casters are still on, not damaged. Lay my floor in, fire my bait in again downstream, and then cast even further down towards that catching zone. Pick my line up get it all straight behind the float and there I am again floats running down towards my captured area just going past the front of the tree we had a bite that time and I missed it so again just follow the process keep firing some in keep casting downstream make sure your presentation's good in the area that you're trying to catch the fish now chub on these type of venues as well, they can come right underneath where your bait's hitting the water. So it's really important to fire that downstream as well. So if that happens, fish come right up your peg, they're sat under your bait. You can cast on top of your bait and still be in the area where the fish are. But obviously at the minute that's not the case. So I'm casting further down to get good presentation. Uh, by feeding down upstream, uh, downstream sorry, enables me to every now and again just have a few casts a bit further up where my feed's entering the water and just see if any fish have, have moved up onto my bait rather than sitting down in the cover where they are at the minute. But a typical chub on a red hot day like today, they all seem to be sat under the cover and that's where nearly all my bites are coming. And this one's just a little chub look by the look of it. Right, that's the end of the session today you're on the river swale um, a lovely day really I've caught sort of 20 small chub from six ounce up to a pound and a half uh, no big ones unfortunately and no barbel but hopefully we'll come back one day and catch them uh, been quite difficult with a bright Sun fish have been really reluctant to come out with a far bank cover from under them trees in the shade really important like I spoke about to cast a long way down the peg meaning that I had really good presentation when I got to there and that's where most of my bites have come. Uh, later on feeding really heavies brought a few more bites when things had slowed right down and I was struggling and that's something to always keep in mind with chub. Really up in the feed towards the India section feeding two, three, four pouchfuls every run down can really bring the fish back onto it. Um, so late in the session when things have died off you're not really catching a lot it's always worth trying that. And then lastly, I've caught my last two or three fish right down the bottom of my peg, basically as far as I could run my float. Um, and that just proves the point like I spoke about earlier, to where it's not worth really fishing that far down your peg early on because it could really kill your peg. And after I've caught them last few fish, I've not had another bite, which I think goes to, goes to show if I'd have done that earlier, 
that would have probably killed it. But all in all, lovely day, really enjoyed it, uh, and hopefully I'll be back soon.